This is a video of some ultrasound images of common adnexal masses. I will describe them using IOTA criteria. When an adnexal mass is seen on pelvic ultrasound, it's important to be able to predict whether the mass is benign or malignant. At the moment, many reports just state whether the mass is simple or complex. Since 2000, the International Ovarian Tumor Analysis Group, IOTA, has published many papers on the description of adnexal masses and prediction of malignancy. Up to 50% of adnexal masses can be correctly identified by appearance alone. This is called pattern recognition and applies to the following lesions. If the mass is not obvious, rather than just calling it a complex mass, you can describe it using IOTA terminology. Describe the number of locules, whether there is any solid material, the echogenicity of the cyst contents. Describe the subjective amount of vascularity on colour Doppler from none, one, to very strong, four, as well as looking for posterior shadowing and ascites. You can then distinguish between benign and malignant ultrasound features and apply simple rules, which are based on these features and can characterise up to 75% of adnexal masses. These are the benign features. The simple rule is that if the mass only has benign features, it is benign. These are the malignant features. The simple rule is that if the mass only has malignant features, it is malignant. If there are no benign or malignant features, or there are some of both categories, then the mass is considered inconclusive. The choice is then to refer the patient to an expert in gynaecology ultrasound, or you might use risk algorithms such as LR2 and ADNEX. Alternatively, you might manage all such patients as though the mass is malignant. The next few slides will show examples of common pathology with some videos. This is a simple cyst. It is unilocular, does not have any solid material, has anechoic contents, no shadowing and only minor vascularity. It was a paratubal cyst on histology. Take care with cysts greater than 10 cm in size. There might be some distal solid material that the probe cannot image and therefore the lesion may look benign but could be malignant. A dermoid or mature cystic teratoma is typically a unilocular cyst with no solid material. The white ball or rocky tansky nodule does not count as solid material. There is mixed echogenicity with some bright echoes, dense shadowing and minor vascularity. The fine lines are typical of hair floating in sebum. Posterior acoustic shadowing can be dense due to the presence of bone or teeth. An endometrioma is typically a unilocular cyst with no solid material. The cyst contents have ground glass echogenicity, some minor shadowing and minor vascularity in the cyst wall. This functional cyst, a hemorrhagic cyst, is unilocular with mixed echogenicity. You can see some clot adhering to the internal cyst wall. It wobbles on pressure with the ultrasound probe. The clot is not solid material and there is no internal vascularity. So this cyst is unilocular, not unilocular solid. A corpus luteum shows the typical peripheral ring of fire with colour Doppler. A serous cyst adenoma is a thin-walled cyst that contains serous fluid. It can be unilocular or multilocular. This example is multilocular, usually with fewer than 10 locules that have no solid material and contain anechoic fluid. The cyst wall is regular. There is not usually any shadowing and the vascularity is minor. Mucinous cyst adenomas are mainly multilocular cysts and can have more than 10 locules. There is no solid material and the cyst wall is regular. The cyst contents are of low level echogenicity and this may vary between locules. Vascularity is usually minor and there can be some shadowing. Some of these cysts are very large. This was a pedunculated fibroid. It is a regular solid mass with shadowing and minor vascularity. You need to look to see whether you can see the ovary separately and whether the mass moves separately from the uterus and the ovary on pressure and whether you can see a vascular connection between uterus and fibroid. A fibroma is a regular solid mass with some shadowing and minor vascularity. It can be mistaken for a fibroid. 
Cystadenofibromas are multilocular solid lesions with marked shadowing and minor vascularity. They are often bilateral and quite a common incidental finding in elderly patients. Borderline cysts can be unilocular solid or multilocular solid with papillations arising from the capsule. These are especially suspicious if they are numerous and vascular. It is often not possible to distinguish between borderline tumours and early invasive ovarian cancer. This advanced ovarian malignancy is a solid lesion as more than 80% of the lesion is solid rather than cystic. It is irregular both in external outline and the internal cystic spaces. The vascularity was strong in areas. There is shadowing and there is ascites. When you have scanned a mass and think it might be malignant, it is important to look for evidence of spread such as ascites, serosal deposits and a mental cake. Here is an example of ascites and large serosal deposits as plaque in the pouch of Douglas. You can see whether the tumour has metastasized to the omentum by scanning in the epigastrium in the longitudinal plane. The omentum is normally difficult to see, but when there are metastases, the resulting omental cake can be quite obvious, floating in ascites. In conclusion, describe any adnexal mass using iota terminology. 75% can be categorised using simple rules and the other IOTA algorithms are very useful for inconclusive cases. Thank you.